So, spoiler, but our prayer request tonight is for Kenya, and we are going to mention African Nazarene University. So I know you went, right, Diane? Did anybody else from here go to the Carol Bell? Okay. Let's get three people who went there. Okay. So that's pretty cool. We'll be praying for a mission site that some people from church went to. Okay, looks like we are on and actually a pretty good connection. Wonderful. So, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm going to start off with um, some information from our prayer mobilization line. Um, I want to start by reading the psalm that was shared today. And just a reminder, if anybody wants these emails, you can go to nmi.org and you can sign up for these if you want them, or you can just come hear them with us. Um, I'll be reading from Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13. I will listen to what the Lord my God says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness brings forth from the earth, sorry, springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. So I really like that. I think especially that second paragraph is a beautiful picture, maybe even of heaven, right? And I'm a little biased here, but, you know, we were talking about the Lord's Prayer on Sunday. For God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I just thought that description of love and faithfulness, righteousness and peace coming all together. And, well, that's kind of what heaven is, right? And when we walk with the Lord, we get to experience part of that. We don't even have to wait till we're dead. So, um, part of the devotional thought that went with this that the, the generals write about is that um, there's a connection here between God's promises and listening to what God says. That we receive God's promises when we, you know, the, the specific, one of the specific phrases here is when we fear the Lord. That's uh, kind of Old Testament for saying, listen to God, you know. Fear of the Lord is the heart of wisdom. It doesn't mean to be afraid of God. It means to understand there will be consequences if we don't live the way we're supposed to. And I guess I was thinking about that, you know, that Sometimes we want God to do this or we want God to do that. But we also have to take responsibility for <coughs> the consequences of our own choices. You know? And even when God forgives us, that doesn't remove the mess we've done. Um, yeah. Sorry. Just getting thoughtful about that. And anyone else have any thoughts here in that psalm? Anything you'd like to share? Or even would anyone else like to share something you've read in your devotions this week? Got kind of a shy group. Okay. Well, while you're thinking, well, hello, Jane. Jane is on Facebook. So I guess that is working since we see Jane. Uh, I'm going to take a moment to do a couple announcements. I know we don't always focus on announcements on Monday, so we have a couple big ones. Saturday is our big barbecue. Woohoo! Yeah. Yay. So here at church, 12 to 4, this Saturday is our 100th anniversary barbecue. So we're going to have brisket and pulled pork and fried chicken. We're going to have the potato salad showdown between Miracle Whip and mayonnaise. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I know who's going to win, but we'll let that new <laughs> the group. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great day. So. Anybody on Facebook who can hear us, that's Saturday, July 17th, if you happen to be listening to this at a different day than when it's on live. But, uh, yeah, so, um, Charlene, what can people do to help? Show up, right? <laughs> Tell people. Um, the tech people will be here on Friday at 10 o'clock. 
And not at night or in the morning? Nothing at the clock. That's in the air. Yeah, they set it up the whole the day before, yeah. So, um, so we'll be doing setting up in, we'll be doing setting up in the gym on Friday, all the tables that are going to be out for Friday, that's for, we'll have to set that up. So what time, if people want to help with that on Friday, what time can they come here most of Friday, so you can come in and out, it'll be like an open house, you want to come. Um, is everything going to be on the inside? No. Yeah. The food is all going to be on the inside. Okay. And then yeah. Saturday, I'll be here bright and early. Because mm -hmm. we're at, we, I mean, I'm not sure if we can really set the tables up, like the tablecloths. Probably right. not. You're gonna probably gonna have to wait till I don't know about the do and all that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So there'll be a yeah. lot of work. Is there gonna be room in all the fridges for the stuff we're bringing? Because I'm making a cold salad. Um, I will be checking in the refrigerators. Because um, Janet, I stopped to see her. She said she went into one fridge and got rid of like the old ancient bottles of yeah. I mean, we haven't had a, an event here hey, in a while. Yeah. We just had a couple visitors come in. Well, I'm not sure so we can wipe our face with them. Mm -hmm. Red and blue is just yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have a table inside, not under the. Just both. Yeah. Under the what? The tent. Welcome. Welcome. So we were just doing some announcements. We were letting everybody know that we're having a barbecue on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, so it's just me talking, although you see James's elbow once in a while, yeah. but other than that, yeah, so, so that's the barbecue Saturday, if you want to come help, you can come out on Friday, we're going to be setting up tables, getting everything staged, if you want to come a little early on Saturday, you can help with that too, we're going to be setting up the microphones and sound system and all that stuff too on Saturday morning, um, we're going to have a worship set with, um, Right, the Sorrels are going to be kind of the lead people, and we've invited lots of people who've been a part of the worship team over the years to participate. So we're not sure, we're still not sure quite how many of those people are going to be able to join us, but we're looking forward to that. Um, we're going to be sharing in some other special music. Paige is going to do In the Garden, and I always forget what the second one was. Anyway, it'll be amazing. You'll probably cry. Um, and we're gonna have we're gonna read uh, Pop Morris's poem. We have that. Oh, yep, we have that. Um, some people are gonna be sharing about some memories of the church. So it's gonna be a really fun day. I think. Yeah, and we'll be asking for testimonies. So if you want to get up and say what the church means to you, or how you have been changed by the people coming to the church, or you know whatever your your testimony. <clears throat> okay, I know you have some good stories, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was here for the last uh, hundred years, right? This is a tough crowd. You know, somebody asked Diane that. You know, yeah. we were talking about somebody in the the picture when the new building was up, and how their mother was pregnant. So somebody who's part of the church now sorry. was in there. <laughs> so sorry. And they're like, "You were here in 1921." <laughs> Yeah. I've been to a war, so I'm not thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. You said. I'm She's talking about domestic conflict, I think. You're talking about how old I am. Uh, and I'm saying. Well, anyway. So that's this Saturday, 12 to 4. We want everybody to come who can. Share it on Facebook. Tell everybody you see. We want everybody here. Um, we got lots of food coming. You can bring more. If you want to bring a side dish or dessert to share, you can do that. But you don't have to bring something. Just come out, and we're going to celebrate. We're going to have the big tent out here where everybody can see us. We're going to be making some noise so our neighbors come out and get some fried chicken. It's going to be a great day. Who's the music? Um, well, we've got a couple special songs by Paige, and then we've got um, Page two. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought was she graduated this year, so she's back up here right now. Oh, cool. um, actually, I think she's saying up here. I think she got. Are we? Am I? I don't know if it's public that she got her new job or not. 
Okay. Okay, so it is public. Paige is going to be uh, a music teacher at Salem High School. Cool. Yeah, she got a job there. So anyway, so Paige is going to be singing a couple special songs, but then the Sorrels, um, Bonnie's daughter Wendy, her husband, and Kayla are going to be like kind of anchoring the worship, but Vicky's going to be singing with them, and I think maybe Sarah, and we've invited some other past members of the worship team to sing. We're not sure who all's going to be able to make it when, but um, I know Kim Evans really wanted to sing with it. I hope that's not a spoiler, but if she can make it up here, she's going to probably sing with them. That, is that definite? I wasn't sure, but I'm not sure if it's definite that she's singing or not. I'm going to see if I can get her to bring her flute to her. She used to play flute. Yeah. So yeah, so we it's basically, we're going to have a kind of a worship set like church. So we're going to sing together, and we're going to sing some worship songs. We've got kind of a few worship, like a few hymns and a few kind of newer ones, and we're all going to sing together. And we are going to be closing with the blessing as our benediction. I made a special request, and Kayla said she could fit it in. So that will be the very last thing we do together, sing the, the benediction together. The other big announcement is VBS coming up August 16th to 19th, right? 20. 20. Yes. I can't count. It starts on the 16th. And that is why I have my friend here. I don't know if you've met my friend here. This is Sir Albert of Deepwater. Albert. Yes. That was my dad's name and my brother's name. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, my dad's name. that's how he got his name. His name. <laughs> that, yes. kind of looks like so Daryl decided he should be named Sir Albert in honor of Al Williams and his love for Bob. But he's not from Deepwater. He's from Canada. Well, I know, but you guys are, so I had to... <laughs> Sir Albert of Glenside. Okay. I like Deep Water. It sounds like King Arthur. Sir Albert of William Drive, even. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> Sir Albert here is going to be joining us for Bible School in August. Uh, you can see his lovely lanyard that all the kids are going to get. And there's a little uh, sticky they get for each lesson that tells the, the memory of the lesson. You can register online on Facebook. You can register here at church. Uh, Sarah's in charge. If you have any questions, you can talk to Sarah. Um, it's going to be awesome. We got lots of people coming. Uh, a bunch of people from the Pioneering Kids Homeschool Group are coming to help us and joining us with leading. Um, so we're really excited. Last year was really sad having COVID and, and no BBS. So we're really excited to get that happen. Brandon again. loaves of bread dressed like a dragon running around. Apparently, there is going to be a loaf of bread dressed as a dragon. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> um, what were the dates for that again? August 16th through 20th. Bring culture. I need her. So we're doing the whole shebang. We got games, we got snacks, we got a sign station, we got stories, we're talking about missions. Our missions focus, we're going to be talking about Papua New Guinea, our friends the Woodleys who came here and spoke, um, who serve at Kujip Station. Um, one of the things they do there is when a new mom comes in and has a baby, they send her home with a baby kit. So it's some, some small necessary items, you know, to have a baby. Kind of like a mini baby shower. So, or a crisis care kit for a baby if you're familiar with those things. So we're gonna be um, collecting those items throughout the week and also collecting donations to either buy items or pay for postage. And then at the end of the week, we're gonna be able to ship a big old package full of stuff down to Papua New Guinea. And I think the Woodleys are even gonna be able to send us a picture when it gets there, which might take a little while. It's not exactly like second day delivery to Papua New Guinea. But I'm really excited about that because we got to meet the missionaries who are doing this work and it's to help little kids, so it's kids helping kids. Very cool. So those are the two big announcements. Um, now that we've got the stream settled down, we've got some people on here. Um, does anyone have a prayer request that you would like to share? And I do give everybody a reminder, we are streaming on Facebook right now, so if you share a prayer request, it's gonna go out on Facebook. So if you'd like to just say unspoken, that's certainly Everybody gets so quiet when the camera comes on. You're not really talking to anybody. This is, we're not here. Oh, that's right. You're not here. So, Albert, what do you think, Albert? Me and Albert are going to talk. I have one. You have one? Um, I, I don't know if Trudy's on right now or not. I don't think she is. I didn't see her name come up. But um, just keep praying for her um, ex-husband because he he's quite sick. 
Because he has liver cancer, right? Yeah, he has he has liver cancer. His name is John. Praise Annalise hasn't gotten the job that we were preparing for, but she kind of got a, like a supervisory position, kind of different. But she got a raise. So <laughs> is she married yet? No. <laughs> okay. Now she's gonna start asking about grandbabies. And... <laughs> no. Give her time. Give her time. Um, we want to keep praying for. Uh, Mark and Cindy Trunkwalter. Um, Mark had a diagnosis of prostate cancer, in case you didn't hear. They did get some good news from his early testing that he's had like the full body scans and that everything's contained to the prostate. So that's a very good kind of first answer. So we're praying that that all stays that way. Um, so he's going to, he, they're still figuring out treatment, but please pray for Mark and Cindy. Do we have we do not. Um, so we're hoping we will see him next Saturday. No news is good news. I yeah. Guess. Yeah, the, the phone number. So um, another gentleman we were praying for, Robert, who had prostate surgery. Yeah, he. we're waiting for an update. Did, did you have one you wanted to check? Um, my son and I need a lot. And your name's Renee, right? We're going through a difficult situation right now. Okay. Well, we're glad to have you with us tonight. There was an accident when I was driving home, right in front of Sergeant Bob's barbecue right there in town. Somebody asked Sam Dobbley. Yeah, she thought, because you said Maria stopped, right? What? You said Maria stopped? Sam Dobbley. Right, but didn't you say Maria stopped to help? Oh, I thought you said. Oh, Colleen moved on. Oh, Colleen stopped. Sorry. No, I drove. Yeah. I saw Sam out, but there was, it was a two, must have been a two-car accident because the van hit the pole, I guess, and the poor woman was just kind of bent over upset. I don't know. But Sam was in the middle of the road, so I don't know what she had to do with it. Yeah. Try not to call too much. But well, I you don't want to cause another one. I had to pull over the cops were coming by. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, well, we'll definitely pray for everybody involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a few unspoken that have come in during the week, so I just want to put that out there. Um, sorry, there's another name I'm looking for here. I'm not seeing it. Carol Isaac's friend that had the heart attack. Her name went out of my head. That was Patty, wasn't it? Pa yeah, Patty. Yeah. Is that Patty Kosky? Yes. That's my cousin. Okay. Uh -huh. I figured somebody would know what I was talking about. Somebody was yeah, Carol said they've been friends since sixth grade. Mm -hmm. But I guess. Well, that makes. See if I'd have known her maiden name. I gotta start asking that. <laughs> yeah. But I guess she had a heart attack and they're concerned about her heart enzyme levels. So she is still in the hospital the last I heard. So please pray for Patty. Um, and also. Uh, Pastor Tom has asked us to keep praying for Janice. Um, basically, there, there, she has some other underlying medical issues that are making um, the surgery she needs difficult. She has to have a heart valve replaced, and she only has one working kidney. And so that kind of makes things complicated for how to make that all work. So please pray for their whole family, but particularly for Janice. Um, I have a couple to share from our missions email. 
So you'll have some time to think if you have any more. Um, each week we, we have a different country in the world where we get some prayer requests from to kind of help remind us to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. And today the country that we got our email about was Kenya. So we were just talking a few minutes ago that a few people from this church have actually done a mission trip to Kenya. So some, well, actually Diane in the room has been to Kenya, so wonderful. Um, Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> On purpose? <laughs> okay. On purpose. <laughs> so Diane got licked by a giraffe. I hear their tongues are like that big. Yeah, I mean, I got a picture where her, oh my Facebook profile picture, her tongue is on my neck, and her beauty top lip is on my Oh my goodness. Wow. Her name was Stacy. We got to know her. Her name was Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least she got her name. Because everybody kept saying, oh, I want to take a picture of her. They have these little pellets that you can feed them. And the guy was trying to be funny and said, and if you're really afraid, you can put it between your lips and let her take it. So I did. <laughs> you know? And it worked. Yeah, I'll work. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's wonderful. I think that, I think I'm okay. <laughs> now finding out what a giraffe can do to my face. <laughs> Listen, if you go all the way to Africa and you meet a giraffe face to face, I feel like you should embrace the Dude, situation. Dude, I ate spam with wow. other things on that that should not be put together. Well, I'm you good. Like I am good. You like that was a good time. So anyway, some of the, uh, they tell us a little bit about Kenya. So for people who might not know, uh, Kenya is in East Africa, and um, they gained their independence from Britain in 1963. And like a lot of countries in the area, when they received, well, when they when they became independent of the colonial countries that were there, there's been a lot of issues with political instability. Um, a lot of borders were kind of drawn up based on where the colonial powers wanted things, and it's just made things pretty messy. Um, there are three main languages spoken in Kenya, Bantu, Nilotic, and Kushite. So that Kushite, if you've heard of Kush in the Old Testament. And there's 26 yeah. other dialects. Yeah, and that's what it says. There are many, many. This says that there are 70 distinct ethnic groups in Kenya. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. that's a lot. So most Kenyans know three languages. Yeah. 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 So that's a lot. I mean, I can't even speak English properly. So. Um, so yeah, they have two official languages, government-wise. One of them is English, like Diane just said. The other one, the dialect is called Kishwahili. Is it Kishwahili or Kiswahili? Anyway, um, I'm going to say a lot of things improperly. I apologize. I'm trying. Um, the majority religion in Kenya is Christian, which is about 85 percent. Um, although nominalism is a major issue, that's one we've talked about in other colonial areas where due to colonial influence, often people will claim the colonial religion, although it's not actually practiced. Um, one of the health issues they've been dealing with there significantly is the AIDS epidemic. Um, nearly 60% of the population is under 25, and it's mm -hmm due in large part to high mortality rates due to AIDS. Um, and of course, now having COVID-19 on top of that is creating not only health problems, but also food insecurity problems. Um, inadequate infrastructure is making it very hard for Kenya to deal with the added health burden of COVID-19 on top of already dealing with the epidemic of AIDS. Um, some of the Prayer requests, well, we have some praises they wanted to share first. And these are actually quotes from different individuals. We don't have names for all of them, but um, one of them is the Bryan family. They're a missionary family. And they praise God that their family has been healthy this year, despite moving internationally during the pandemic. So they moved to Kenya during the pandemic. Um, another missionary named Cindy North said she is from African Nazarene University. I don't suppose you met Cindy North while you were there. Yeah. You remember the name? Oh, 
yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Well, isn't that awesome? We're praying for somebody from Africa, and you know who she is. Okay. Well, her prayer request is for the university. She, she prays that um, God would help the university to continue to impact lives. Um, even during the pandemic, there are still students coming to the university and coming to know God through their time there. Um, she said they had a student recently who had given up hope and was even contemplating suicide, but came to the chaplaincy, reached out to the staff, and through prayers and support of the staff, he's been able to come back to, to the university and to life. I think they withheld a name for privacy, but um, that's one of those things, you know, touching a life like that is a, yeah, it's an amazing gift. Uh, another gentleman by the name of Carlos Gordon uh, says that they give thanks to the Lord for his continued faithfulness um, in allowing him to travel and meet with other colleagues um, from Southern Africa and Nairobi. And then there are some requests as well that came in. Um, one is from Rusty Bryan. Any, I'm seeing if this rings any bells. Rusty Bryan. Um, he asks for prayers in the face of challenges as they have small children and they are very far from family and friends. Um, there are prayers for a French seminary, um, FATN, and I don't know what that all stands for. Um, and for the students preparing there. Um, also, continue to pray for the university, for its whole community, that they would be able to continue to minister to the community around the university, not just students in the university. And to please pray for the sponsored missionaries in Kenya, that God would continue to protect them physically and provide for their needs. Um, many of these missionaries depend on home assignments to raise money so that they can then go back to the mission field. And a lot of that's been disrupted this year. So, so those are some praises and some concerns from Kenya. Um, Lindsey Brown says hello. And we got to see the, uh, we got to see the boys for a minute this afternoon. Um, I will say Lindsey survived the great man cold of 2021. <laughs> uh, Pastor Matt and all three boys are doing better. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, so thanks for those prayers. Any other prayer requests anybody might have thought of while we were sharing? There was, I think, on Monday or Tuesday, a shooting in Carney's Point or Penn's Grove. And the guy, uh, from my understanding, did not survive. And apparently this was the second time he was shot in the last two years. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it is, uh, it's getting worse. Wow. Yeah. Anything else anyone would like to share before we go into prayer? With my sisters and my daughter and my grandkids. All right, anything else? All right, please join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for another chance to come together. Thank you for this chance to join in this building and with our friends online. Thank you for this chance to speak with you and to hear from you. Father, we uh, thank you for that psalm we were able to open with tonight, Psalm 85. And I pray that you would help us to hold on to that imagery, that promise of love and faithfulness, right, righteousness and peace all coming together. Father, we know, especially from some of the prayer requests we just shared, that these are not always things that we feel 
in our day-to-day -day life. It's not always what we see in the world around us. But Father, we know that you promised to be present in our hearts and our lives in a powerful way. And so we lean on that promise tonight. Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters in Kenya tonight. We thank you for the chance to uh, hear some firsthand testimony of ministry over there. And we celebrate the work you are doing. We uh, thank you for being present um, with the Bryan family, with the North family, with Carlos Gordon. Um, Father, we thank you for their words of testimony of what you were doing in their communities and of your protection, whether it was from illness or from car accidents. Father, you've been faithful to this community and we thank you for that. We also lift up their requests that you would continue to be with African Nazarene University, that you would help them to minister to their community, that you would be with them as they begin this new work of this French seminary. And Father, thank you for all of the men and women who have received a call to missions and have gone out to share your word and to share hope with the world. We pray for our brothers and sisters there struggling with the ongoing AIDS epidemic and now COVID-19 during this global pandemic. Father, we pray that the church would be able to be present and real in their lives, that you would help us as much as possible to care for those who need help. We also lift up the concerns of those here in the community. Father, we lift up the family of Darlene's patient who passed away suddenly this week. Father, we pray that you would be with them in their time of loss and their time of mourning and that their hearts would know comfort from you. We also pray that you would be with Darlene. Um, Father, being a, a nurse is a tough job and uh, we thank you for her heart, for caring for the people that she gets to see. We pray that you would continue to use her not just to care physically for her patients, but to continue to bring hope and love into their lives. We lift up Trudy's ex-husband and his liver cancer diagnosis. Father, we know that this is a very serious um, situation. I don't know where John's faith is, Father. I don't know if he knows you, um, but I pray that in this time he would be able to come to lean on you. We lift up Trudy and her children we pray that you would be with the whole family as they are dealing with this situation, as they seek to care for John. Father, we celebrate Annalise's victory at work. We thank you that she's been able to get this raise and the management promotion. And we pray that you would continue to be with her on her journey. We know that there have been several options that have come up to her over the year, and there's some question about which way you're taking her, Father. So I pray that you would give her wisdom and that you would continue to hold her in the palm of your hand. We lift up Mark and Cindy, Father. We pray that you would give Mark physical healing for his prostate cancer. We thank you for the good first report, and we pray that um, his surgery would go well, that the cancer would be contained, and that it would be completely removed. Father, we pray for complete healing for Mark, and we pray that you would be with Cindy as she seeks to minister to him. Father, we lift up Renee and her son. We thank you that they've been able to join us tonight. And Father, while we don't know everything about what they're dealing with, you do. It's obvious that they have a need, that they're hurting. And so, Father, I pray for your hand. I pray that you would be able to take this difficult situation and turn it into a testimony of your provision. I pray that you would be with them physically, emotionally, and spiritually as they're going through this difficult time. Father, we lift up the people involved in this car accident in town tonight. Again, Father, we don't know exactly what happened or even how many people are hurt, but it looks serious. And so, Father, we pray that no one would have been seriously injured, and we pray for the first responders and neighbors who jumped out to help. And, uh, Father, we pray for your hand in that situation. We lift up Patty Kosky, Father. We pray that you would be with her in the hospital. We pray that her heart enzyme numbers would come down and that there would not be permanent heart damage from her heart attack. Father, we pray that you would be with her also spiritually as she is in the hospital and, and waiting. And we know that it's such a difficult situation to be in. So, Father, we pray that she would know your peace in this situation as well. We lift up Janice Lehman to you, Father. 
We pray that you would give Pastor Tom and Janice wisdom as they try to navigate the medical decisions. We pray that you would be with her doctors and surgeons as they figure things out. Father, we pray for Worky as she has to see her mom be sick. We pray that you would give her peace in this as well. Father, we know that this is a difficult road, but we know that you are the way maker. And so we pray that you would make a road forward for Janice, that you would bring her restored health, and that we could celebrate her healing. Father, we lift up the family of this man who was shot in, in Penn's Grove, Father, to be shot twice in two years, and now to have this fatal shooting, Father. Um, we lift up his family and his friends. We lift up the neighborhood. We lift up the town, Father. We know it's been a hard year for Penn's Grove, for violence, and really for the whole area. Um, there have been shootings and robberies and suicides, and Father, it's been a really hard year. So we pray for your presence in this community. We lift up Sarah's family to you, Father. We pray that you would be with them in their time of need. We lift up Darlene's family, her daughter, and her grandchildren. Father, we lift up the unspokens. Um, we lift up the unspoken for a sick mother. We lift up another unspoken for a young man going through a very hard time. And Father, the rest of the unspokens. We know there are many needs on many hearts. Father, we pray that as we go through these valleys, as we go through these dark, shadowed valleys, that we would feel your presence, that we would know you are there to provide for us and protect us. Father, help us to trust in you and to know you're there. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's going to be a habit for the rest of my life, I feel like. <laughs> Um, a new one came in while we were praying, so I do want to share that. Lindsey Brown asked if we could pray for her friend's father. He had knee replacement surgery and is having trouble in recovery right now. There are complications from the anesthesia. So, um, please pray for him. We'll, we'll pray again at the end. So. I don't write it down, I'll forget, so forgive me the delay here. Um, I'll let you know if anything else comes in on Facebook, but uh, yeah, we have uh, several people on, only Jane and Lindsay that I know names. Unfortunately, I don't get to see the names of everybody who's watching just through comments, so we'll say hi as people pop on and you can know who's with us. Uh, so we are going to jump into our Bible study now. Um, we have been going through the book of Acts, and uh, the book of Acts is a, a really beautiful one for me right now, because the book of Acts is kind of the story of how the church began. It's the story of how the church went from Easter to being a church, and uh, we're in chapter 26 tonight, um, and just, well, Paul's still in trouble, so. Okay, good. You missed a few chapters, but. I was like, what chapter are we in? Yeah. always in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're in chapter 26. So where we left things off, Paul had come before a Roman governor, Felix, for a trial. And Felix didn't want to give Paul a fair trial, but he also didn't want to... Uh, he, he was kind of stuck in a bind. Paul was a Roman citizen, so he couldn't just punish Paul for something he didn't do. But the Jewish leaders wanted Paul punished. So instead of fixing anything, Paul was kind of left to sit in uh, prison for a couple years. I guess it was more like house arrest than actually being in a prison, but he spent two years in custody under Felix. Then we get a new guy, a new governor comes into town named Festus. And in his first couple days on the job, Festus wants to handle this situation. He wants to deal with Paul and kind of get him out of his hair. And in trying to figure things out, Paul, where we left things last week at the end, Paul made a claim to one of his rights as a Roman citizen. Does anybody remember what Paul claimed for? Before the emperor. Exactly. He claimed to uh, his right to appeal his case before the emperor. So that's something that a Roman citizen could do. So now Felix 
or sorry, Festus has to figure out what to do because Paul hasn't actually done anything wrong. So before Festus sends Paul on to Rome, he's supposed to kind of fill out the paperwork that says what Paul's charges were, but there's no charge. He didn't actually do anything. So another guy comes to visit Festus since he's the new guy on the block, another guy named Agrippa, King Agrippa. And so where we are now, Festus and Agrippa are listening to Paul, and they want to know his side of the story. So the people who were accusing him got their chance to talk, and they really didn't have a case that held water. And now Paul gets his chance to share his side. So that's where we're joining in, Paul explaining his side of the story. So if we could, could somebody read Acts chapter 26? Uh, just start with verses 1 through 3, please. Could somebody read that for us? Thank you, Dorothy. Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa, I am to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews, because you are especially familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. Thank you. So I know that was a short section, but... I want to kind of jump into the beginning, right? Paul finally gets his start. This is kind of his opening argument. What's the very first thing Paul says to King Agrippa? If you have been held in jail for two years without being charged, and you finally got your chance to stop to talk, would you say I'm fortunate to be here today? <laughs> I'd at least been complaining about the bed sheets or something, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's an interesting point. You bring up the idea of a lawyer, right? A little bit ago when the Jewish leaders made their case against Paul, remember, they had a professional lawyer who came and talked for them. Does Paul have a professional lawyer? No. Mm -mm. But Paul is a professional speaker. So it looks like he's defending himself, and maybe he'll have trouble, but I think he's going to do all right. So he's fortunate to be there. And then we don't know a whole lot about King Agrippa, but Paul tells us a couple important things. What does Paul tell us about Agrippa that's going to be important for this conversation? He is very familiar with the Jewish customs. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that important? Why is it important that Agrippa knows Jewish customs? Because he himself is Jewish. Mm -hmm. Who is accusing him? The Jews. And what are they accusing him of? Breaking Jewish, Jewish law. Sin. Yeah, breaking Jewish law. Yeah. So it's good for Paul that there's somebody there who knows the law. Um, do, do, is Paul's opening, is he coming across as a guilty person or an innocent person? Innocent. Yeah, I'm glad you know the law that's going to help me out. Yeah. And here's the tricky thing. If Paul, let's say Paul is guilty of breaking a Jewish religious law. Do King Agrippa or Festus the governor have anything to do with enforcing religious law? No. Nope. No, they're Roman leaders, right? So they're, they're dealing with like the civil law. Like, did you murder somebody? Did you steal from somebody? Did you pay your taxes, right? Did you cause a riot? Did you cause a riot? Yeah, exactly. Um, they don't really care about the religious stuff. As long as you're paying your taxes and you're not causing trouble, that's all they want. Um, so let's continue on, and Paul's going to start explaining things. Can somebody read verses 4 through 8, please? Very well. Thank you. The Jews all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child, from the beginning of my life in my own country, and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time and can testify that they are willing that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised to our fathers that I am on trial today. This is the promise our 12 tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly serve God day and night. O King, it is because of this hope that the Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? Amen. Thank you. Amen, yeah. So this might seem like a side point, but 
it's a little confusing thing, and I want to bring this up. I mean, Paul's here talking about his hope in Jesus, but he's also talking about all this Jewish stuff. So, which is it? Is Paul Jewish or is he Christian? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy you all said that. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yes, he's both. So, I know for us, this is one of those differences in history that we have to touch on sometimes. Like for us today, you know, in the year 2021, Christianity and Judaism, for most people, would consider our separate religions. And we know that, you know, that Venn diagram does overlap a little with people who consider themselves completed Jews or Messianic Jews. But for the most part, people consider being Jewish and being Christian separate things. Right. Did Paul consider that being separate things? No, no. So for Paul, Jesus, well, and not just for Paul, but in general, Jesus wasn't trying to start a new religion, right? All the writings that told about Jesus coming, where were, where were those writings found? In the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, yeah. So Jesus came as a Jewish man to fulfill Jewish prophecy to be the Jewish Messiah. Problem was, not all the Jewish people recognized him as Messiah. So we've got kind of Paul and his group who do recognize Jesus as Messiah, and then the other group who doesn't. Um, this is where some of this infighting happens. So, Paul does talk about his hope in Jesus, but he also talks about his past. So he doesn't spell everything out here, but just for people who don't know, do any of you guys know anything about Paul's past? How he was born, how he grew up, anything like that? He studied under that one guy, I forget the guy's name. Gamaliel, yes. Yeah. yeah, he studied under a very famous priest in Jerusalem. Very well educated. So that's kind of like saying I'm a doctor and I went to Harvard. Yeah. 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 Um, he was of the tribe of Benjamin. So he has a, a documented lineage to a Jewish tribe, which was important for a Jewish man back then. If you had to be able to document which tribe you came from to kind of have your legitimate claim. Um, and he was also a Pharisee. So what do you guys know about Pharisees? They know the law, exactly. Now, Jesus and the Pharisees didn't always agree on the interpretation of the law, but the Pharisees were very well known for not just knowing the law, but for zealously following the law. You know, they knew all the rules, and they kept them as hard as they could. So it's kind of, I mean, this is kind of silly, right? This is, I'm not even sure I can think of a good modern example, but, you know, it's, It, it, yeah, I, I'm blanking out here on a, on a good analogy, but you know, it, it's like saying I don't know, <coughs> Dale Earnhardt didn't know how to drive a car, right? Right? Or Bo Jackson didn't know football and baseball. Right? I don't, I, somebody brought up Bo Jackson the other day. I know that dates me, but I don't care because Bo knows. <laughs> oh, that cut me deep, Charlie. That cut. Me. <laughs> How are you going to convince somebody, or how are you going to convict somebody whose whole life was built around the law and say they didn't follow the law? It's ridiculous to even say, right? Um, and yet, here we are with the Jewish leaders trying to say Paul broke Jewish law when he's a Pharisee himself. He alludes to one of the kind of things that was going on in the Jewish council when he talks about how the real problem is that he believes in resurrection of the dead. Do you guys remember why that's an issue? He's not sad, you see. He's not sad, you see. Oh, see, you laughed. I knew somebody was going to make that joke. So, uh, just using some Hebrew words here that you might read in the Bible, the Jewish ruling council was called the Sanhedrin. And they were broken up into two main groups. You had the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Paul was a Pharisee. The other half were the Sadducees. And one of the big differences were what they believed was going to happen after you died. The, the Pharisees believed that after you died, someday the Messiah would come back and everyone would be resurrected together in paradise, right? which is very similar to the way it's explained in, in the New Testament. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection of the dead, which is why they were sad, you see. So that was the joke Charlene was making. Um, so what did they believe? They believed that when you die, it would just kind of, it was like you fell asleep, and that was it. Well, what about their belief in God? They, were they didn't believe in afterlife. 
Yeah, they believe that basically any blessings you got from God were going to come on earth. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of sad, huh? Yeah, really. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh, yeah? <laughs> Dr. Chuck. Dr. Chuck, okay. <laughs> um, I've heard it a couple places, and it's awesome. And uh, this book is really when you get to use it the most. So, and I'm so happy that other people are using it <laughs> to know that I've influenced another life. It warms my heart. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's kind of all the background that's going on. There was already infighting in this group, and Paul's like, "Listen, I don't actually break any rules. They're all just mad at each other and trying to throw me under the bus," which. Honestly, it's kind of true. So let's continue on here. Uh, verses 9 through 18. It's a little bit bigger chunk. So I'll warn you, whoever wants to volunteer to read this, it's a little bit longer, but it's kind of one big thought, so I don't want to cut it up. What is it? 9, 9 through, 18. through 18. I can read it. Why, thank you, my dear. You're welcome. I, too, was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the saints in prison, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished, and I tried to force them to blaspheme. In my obsession against them, I even went to foreign cities to persecute them. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with, with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, O king, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint to I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue, from your, rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may for, receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Thank you. So fun fact, if you're a John and Cash fan and like when the man comes around, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. That's where that line comes from. Also, I don't get the word Johnny Cash into many Bible studies, so <laughs> I do that when I can as well. Um, so, in the section before this, Paul's talking about his background, his pedigree, right? I'm a Pharisee. I studied under the big bad teacher guy. You know, I know all this stuff, like kind of all his, all the reasons you should believe him. Well, that's true, too. He's not bragging about that yet, though. No. Um, he starts off by laying the groundwork of here. You know, here's my resume. Here's all the reasons you should trust me and believe me. But now he kind of takes a turn, right? Mm -hmm. This next section, is he talking about teaching the law and doing all the right stuff? What's he talking about? Well, persecuting Jewish people. Persecuting Christian people. He's talking about being a Jewish leader persecuting people who follow Jesus. Yeah. Um, when we first meet Paul, it's before he changed. This change of life was so big, he changed his name. So that's why in here it says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? His name used to be Saul, and it changed to Paul. But back before his name change, um, he helped round up people who believed in Jesus. He'd bring them before the leaders, and they would either recant, or they'd get beaten until they change their mind, or they might even get killed. So when we meet Paul back in Acts chapter 6, that's what happened. He was, he was the one who arrested Stephen and helped get him stoned to death. So, I got to admit, if I'm on trial before a Roman governor and my fate is iffy, I don't know that I want to bring this stuff up, right? Um, but he brings it up for a reason. Why does he bring up the bad stuff that he did? To show what the good from Jesus. The good Jesus exactly. He can't share his testimony of how God changed him if he doesn't explain who he was before that. Right. So he says, you know, I, I used to persecute the church. I used to persecute followers of the way. 
But then one day, he had this literal blinding experience where Jesus speaks to him from the sky and says, why are you persecuting me? Get up. Here's your job. I've appointed you to serve as a witness, right? And I want to read one, I want to read this part here. Can somebody read verse 18 for me again? Chapter 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. It's almost like he's preaching, right? Mm -hmm. Is Paul defending himself at all? He's witnessing the King Agrippa, right? Do you think, I mean, without this trial, would a guy like Paul have any chance of sitting before Agrippa and Festus in the court and sharing his testimony? No. But God has worked it out, so Paul's just where he needs to be. On the surface, it doesn't look that great, right? Because he's been in jail for a couple years and all that. But really, Paul's job, he was told us a couple chapters ago. Do you remember what Jesus told Paul he was going to do? There's a certain city he was supposed to go to. Rome. And at this time, Jewish people weren't allowed in Rome. Because of the prejudice against Jewish people, there was a law that had passed that Jewish people weren't allowed to set foot in the city of Rome. So how do you get a Jewish guy into Rome? They bring him right in. The soldiers carry him in on a cart, right? Did those guys ever, like, sorry to put this weirdly, but did those guys ever die? Sitting out front starving themselves. We never find out for sure. I like to think they gave up and were made fun of for the rest of their life. So earlier there was a group of men who took a vow that they would not eat or drink until they killed Paul. And that was before the two years in jail. So I like to think that they gave up, ate a cheeseburger, and all their friends made fun of them. <laughs> but that's not biblical. That's just mine. There were no cheeseburgers at home. That's true. And actually cheeseburgers are not kosher. Have to just be a hamburger. Really, it's not. The cheese and the meat yeah. together is another one. Can't mix. You can't. You can't mix the. Yeah. You can have column A. You can have column B, but you can't put them together. I know it's sad. I'm so glad. Yeah. Listen, Peter had the dream: kill and eat and put cheese on it. So anyway. Um, we can talk about that more if anybody wants to later. But Paul has shared his testimony that his job is to tell everybody about Jesus. Not just Jewish people, but also Gentiles. And that's what he's doing right now. It's almost like Paul cares more about that mission than he does his defense. Because he does. Because he does, yeah. He does. Yeah. So let's, let's keep going in Paul's uh, speech here. Uh, Can somebody read verses 19 to 24, please? So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and all those in Judea, and then to Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. This is why some Jews seized me, and in the temple courts they tried to kill me. But God has helped me to do to this very day, so I stand here and testify to the small to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen. Mm. That the Messiah would suffer and the first to rise from the dead would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. Some versions say, too much study has made you crazy. (laughs) Yeah. So Paul has talked all this about Jesus, and now he kind of brings it back to the beginning. He says, um, I teach nothing except what the prophets and Moses said would happen. Now, from our perspective, is Paul telling the truth? Yeah. Jesus meets all the requirements for the Messiah in the Old Testament. 
where he was born, what he did, how he died, how he rose again, everything. All the little pieces all fit together perfectly for Jesus. So Paul's saying, I never taught anything that went against the law because originally he was accused of a couple things. One of them was causing the riot, which that was disproven early on because there were Roman soldiers there who knew they were protecting Paul from the crowd. They know that Paul didn't cause the riot. They knew that it was a group of Jewish men from Asia who were trying to kill Paul. The other thing they said was that Paul broke Jewish law by bringing a Gentile into the temple. But we also proved that wrong because they didn't have a single witness who could prove that he did it. So the third thing they accused him of was teaching against the law of Moses. But he's just said, measure my claims. It's all there. Yeah, it's all there. So why didn't the Jews get it? And why do they not still get it? Still not get it? Okay, well, I'm going to flip that around. What do you think? Why do you think they didn't get it? I don't know. Okay. They knew the, the, you know, I mean, it's all there. And all roads lead to Jesus. Mm hmm Neon sign. Bing, bing, bing. But it didn't happen the way they had envisioned it to happen. They thought he was oh, going to yeah, come yeah. as a grand king. Yeah, power. So we talked about this in men's group on Monday night. So we're studying the book of Revelation. Right? And where we are right now, well, you know, we'll fit you in. Just get a fake mustache. We'll, we'll call you Dougie, and it'll work out. Um, but uh, anyway, one of the things that we were just talking about is how you know, in the section we're at, you have the great red, the great dragon, and then the beast from the sea comes up, and the dragon gives the beast all of his authority, and it's kind of this like perverse mirror image of God and Jesus, mm -hmm. how God, you know, gives authority to Jesus, who is the Lamb, and the, but the difference is, the Lamb, who in Revelation is the only one who's worthy to open the scroll and save us, he died and rose again for love. He doesn't fight by force. He died through love. Whereas the beast shows off his strength. He struts around and kills people and, and tries to earn... Um, right. Yeah, he tries to earn maybe not love or belief, but fear and respect from the world out of his power. And that's the same kind of thing we're seeing today. You know, in, from a human perspective, we want God to come in and, you know, kick butt and take names. Right? And that's what the Jewish people wanted. They had been conquered by Rome. Right. They were in their homeland, their house, and somebody else was sitting at the dinner table with their boots on it, right? Mm -hmm. And they wanted God to come in and smack people around and have a war, and you know they could stand on their enemies and you know take their pig. Oh my God, kill a Roman! You know, that's what they wanted. They should have knew better, though. They should all these years and everything that was written from Moses and. All the people that have come before that and the stuff, yeah, they should have known by that. Okay. Heaven is backwards from Earth. Or Earth is so, backwards from Heaven. Then. So here's my next question. Shouldn't we? Yeah. Shouldn't we what? Know better. Absolutely, yeah. People yeah. today, shouldn't we know better? Absolutely. That was all second-hand knowledge to them. They learned it from a book. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the people at the base of Mount Sinai. <laughs> yeah. 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 They saw it firsthand, and they still built the whole <laughs> yeah. I think part of this discussion for me is it's been the same question from Adam and Eve to me and you today, always. God says, if you live this way, you will have peace and love and happiness and joy. And if you choose anything else, it's not going to work. Right? If you choose anything else, it might seem fun in the beginning, it might distract you in the beginning. That first bite of that fruit might taste good, but you're gonna, it's going to lead to death. Right? And what do we choose? You know? We don't want to be obedient to Christ. We, don't, we want Jesus to fix our problems, but we don't want to listen to what he says. You know, we want him to heal us when we're sick, and we want him to pay the electric bill because we've been running the air conditioner a lot. But do we want to give him our heart? 
Do we want to give him our love and our lives? Do we want to actually do what he said and love our neighbors? You know? It's like the, the song I played on Sunday that some people loved and some people didn't love as much. <laughs> you know, I know that you're made by God and I'm supposed to love you, but I want you to die. And it was about a bug. It was a song about a bug. But that's, that's what we do, right? I've done that in the past. Have you guys? These are my neighbors. Yeah. But you love us. Yeah, yeah. Right. Eh. We gave it away. <laughs> yeah, they gave it away. Eh. What can I say? Eh. They, yeah. The little ones are cute. Yeah. It's us, right? That's something I mentioned. I read in a book about the fall. The importance of that story of Adam and Eve isn't that it happened. The importance is that it happens. That you and I do that too. All, every single one of us. And Paul writes about this. I mean, that's why Satan became Satan. Mm -hmm. That's why we all need Jesus. That's why we all need Jesus. Because we're all lost without it, bumbling in the dark. And we think we know what we need, but what we think we need isn't really what we really need. So I have a little side note on that. Today I was on my lovely bleachers painting. Oh. And a million degrees. You've done some good thinking on those bleachers. I, I have, honestly. So hear me out on this, okay? It's a million degrees. I'm sweating. I'm hot. <laughs> right? This little nice gust of wind comes by. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, <clears throat> guess what happened after that? It rained. Here comes some more wind. And it was just flowing. And for the rest of the time I was painting, I was getting the breeze. Aw. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And he just kept feeding me that little breeze. Aww. Before that, it was hotter than hot, and I could barely stand to be up there. It's just one of them little things, like you're saying, just that you cheek. just thank him for that. I didn't ask for the wind. He knew I was hot. He knew I was sweating. He knew I was about to fall over. And that little gust of wind came. And I thanked him, and here it continued to come for the rest of the time I was there. Yeah. That's a witness. I did. I actually did. Yeah. One of the guys, the guy that I'm working with, he's wicked. So I have been witnessing and talking with him and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it started off with that. And then today I was like, see, I was like, this is kind of, you know, this is what happens for me, believing in Jesus. I said, we got this little gust of wind to come through. And I said, thank you. And I mean, he witnessed the whole thing. Literally the whole thing, and it was like wind after wind after that, and yeah, yeah, but non-believers. Oh, that's just a coincidence. You know, I'll be honest with you. I was expecting something along that line, and he actually didn't say anything. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, to, so to me, yeah, yeah cool. you know, that was like I was expecting exactly as you said. I was expecting a negative, or and he didn't say anything at all. Nothing yeah. yeah, he's thinking about it. So, yeah, the the bleachers of death have been uh, turned, <laughs> turned around today for me. <laughs> Take the bleachers of death and turn them into a source of life. Yep. I yeah, if any of you drive by the middle school and see the beautifully painted bleachers, that was James. We can thank James. I said if I'm laying face down, just flip me over, that way I can, you know, tan on the other side. <laughs> Yeah, Gatorade with you. Oh, I have that. Gatorade and water. Gatorade yeah. and water. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that that was really cool. Speaking of which, we have milk to get out tonight. I plan on taking more milk. Okay, so no, if anybody needs please. milk, we have milk. No, no, no I'm taking the little ones. No. I, I drank like four chocolate ones this morning. He loves those little chocolate ones. I do. No. He I pretends do. he's a giant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this beautiful and now you're making I couldn't button. help it. I couldn't help it. Right. Tough crowd. Well, we kind of took a bunny trail. I will give you chocolate milk when we are done. I'll give you a half gallon of chocolate milk. You can drink the whole thing. I won't tell. Okay. If you throw up, just do it after you get out of her car. She's got to fix uh, Anyway, I know we kind of took our bunny trail. We'll kind of pause there for tonight in Acts 26. But does anybody else have any, any other questions you might want to ask or anything else you want to bring up before we finish up tonight? I know we kind of covered a whole bunch there at the end. We went from Adam and Eve to the pencil bleachers. But. That's good. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I keep, I don't know why I was thinking. 
Uh, never mind, they were the Pennsburg bleachers, so I'm not going to drive by there. Yeah. Stay away from there. Remember to pray. Turn into paint with me. Huh? Yeah, we're going to pray for Lindsay's, pray for Lindsay's friend's dad. Lindsay's friend's dad when you close. Um, but anything else anybody want to share or ask or bring up or maybe um, you thought of another parent? Where's the barbecue again? The barbecue <laughs> is Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. So just a few days. What time? Later. What time? 12 to 4. Say 10 to 5. Out there. Lots of food. Um, we are getting meat from the Italian kitchen. We're going to get pulled pork, brisket, and fried chicken. Um, as I mentioned, dueling potato salads. I'm very excited about that. We're going to see the outcome finally. Mayonnaise versus Miracle Whip. We all know the truth on that one, right? Yeah. Mayonnaise. I don't want to try it. The only Miracle Whips around here come from Jesus turning over tables in the temple. Okay. I was saving that one, but I want to get I'll test it out. Oh my goodness. All right. Anything else before we close in prayer? All right, well, let's pray together. Father God, we want to lift up this prayer request that just came in from Lindsay. Father, we pray for her friend's dad who had surgery and is having trouble coming out of anesthesia. Father, we pray that you'd give wisdom to the nurses and doctors. We pray that you would touch his body and that you would bring him out of this anesthesia well and safe. We thank you for this time together tonight, this time to share in your word and to share in conversation with each other. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Bible and the chance to read it and to hear your heart, to hear about your never-ending love for us. And thank you that we get to kind of dig through it together, that we can uh, sharpen each other and teach each other and grow as a family as we spend time in your word. Please be with us in the coming weeks, Father. We pray for your blessings over this barbecue. We pray that we could all come together in joy and fellowship and celebrate your goodness and your provision in our community. Father, we lift up Bible school. We pray for the meeting coming up tomorrow night. And Father, just thank you. Thank you for all the people who have rallied to volunteer. And even though we're still a month away, Father, we are so excited. Thank you for this chance to minister to young people, to share some hope and love to kids in our church and kids in our community. Please guide us, Father. Please guide our hearts and our minds as we try our best to serve you and share your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That was pretty good. It's because I didn't clap because I'm always late. Good job. You lag. All right, so um, let me close out the live video. Goodbye, everybody on Facebook. There really are people in the room. It's not just me and Albert. And me. And Jill. And That's Josiah. right. We can see Jill. And Josiah. You can kind of see me.